Okay, so what we're going to be going over here is uh, an excellent program of Espada Hidalga and Bastoni Hidalga. And what we're going to start with is long range. We're going to progress that into Largo Medio. And then we'll do a few exercises in that range. Then we'll go into some technical elements after we flow through these ranges. We'll get to disarming, and I'm going to teach you something really, really fantastic. Part of uh, Bastoni Daga and Espadia Daga that will help you with retention. So one of the biggest complaints I've always had about this subsystem of Kali is being able to retain it. Because it's the largest subsystem in Kali. So what we're going to do here is, is build a platform for you so that you have plenty of good drills and exercises, right? Along with why you do those, where and when to do them, and then how to get to certain places that will offer you opportunity for defending the snake, uh, whether by fire or by mechanism. In other words, a natural disarm, which is actually chopping the limb, or one that is preceded by strikes and then is just relieving them of the weapon mechanically. So we have a really good set of things we're gonna work on today uh, throughout this uh, video series. So, you know, uh, get a training partner and get ready to practice it. We're gonna go over it slow enough so that you can learn it while you're watching. Uh, really how fast I go really shouldn't matter to you. And so we're not gonna try to show off, just give you some good solid instruction like I always do. Okay, so this first part is the long range. And this is part uh, I think is really important because it should precede all other distances uh, with this type of weapon. You shouldn't really be automatically at close quarter uh, when you have weapons of this uh, type. So we'll do this uh, really slow so that you can see it also and so nobody gets hurt. If dog strikes at me, my first motion is just to cut it. Notice I'm outside of the arc of his weapon, so whether or not I cut him really doesn't matter that much. But if I cut him and his hand retracts and he draws the dagger, I just step into that position and cut his arm. All right. So as he comes at me like that, see, I just go here and then I move here. And that's already cutting. So we call it kind of a zigzag pattern because I'm stepping in a zigzag pattern. And if he continues, then we call it a zigzag pattern. And this is really hard to keep on camera because the weapons are so long. But initially, if I slash, he'll move to his, to his left. And that's it right there. Okay. Then if I thrust it, he would just shift the other direction. And he would be like that. And that wouldn't matter if I used a, a horizontal slash and a thrust. Or if I came with an overhead strike and a thrust. Okay, or if I thrust it and thrust it, right? That's going to be the same basic and you should really do that that exercise itself, just like you would what we call the traveling drill. So you're going to be moving up and down and using a lot of distance, and each of you is gonna get a turn. You're gonna go back and forth, maybe 20, 30 feet, practicing that as you go, and you should end up seeing the zigzag pattern in your footwork. It's really gonna be hard to display it here. So that's, that's really what I'm doing, is trying to create that that line where he cannot reach me, and he cannot reach me. So I just go like that, cut, and I can also cut to the inside. So if he swung his, his sword twice, I really wouldn't change my motion. That's, that's a key factor is you're just going kind of like that. Whether it's a three, whether it's a one and a two, a five and a two, just going to treat it kind of all the same. Because you're at the fighting measure. So you're at the fighting measure and your distance pacing as you go through that. Okay? So that's really, really simple. 
but I don't really see anyone practicing that. So you should practice it because that's going to be your first order of business. After that, you're going to break into maybe a closer range, yes. But don't start at the closer range and never go back and practice. That first stroke could be the deciding factor. If you don't practice it at all, you're going to end up having that deficiency of maybe that first half a second of combat. You're waiting and you're stationary when you should be moving and already uh, strategizing. Okay, so what we're going to go into now is the basics of, of the Largo Medio, or it's right in between long, long range and middle range. It's where we use a lot of the, the scissor motion, very, very similar to the Largo. We just add the support of the dagger. So the first one of these we're going to do is so that you learn the scissor, okay? So really, as I, as I attack, we're, we're not going to move around much, but this should be very, very mobile, okay? But it's, it's going to be hard to keep in the camera. So if I attack number one and he scissors that, he will answer with a backhand, I just receive it with the dagger, because what we're pricing is him hitting me. Okay, so when I scissor, okay, I catch that, now I do the number two angle, and, and I catch that here. So he is just, just answering with one stroke. Okay, all the way through, he's just answering with one stroke. So as I thrust, he's just answering with one stroke. As I get up, he's answering with one stroke. And we just kind of go like that. We go right through the clock, or right through the number system. Really, really simply like that, okay? Uh, but it shouldn't actually be practiced like that. If he gives me a one, I probably am way over here. When he goes two, I probably move all the way over here to hit. But if we do that on the video, you won't be able to keep it. We really need a drone, okay, to cover it. Which we have, but we can't use it correctly yet. So, so when, I, when I do the scissor like that, and I answer with the backhand, when I move over here, see what I'm I'm really at no time again in the arc of that weapon, but I'm taking a little piece of his arm and backhand. And if I can, I add a little bit of what a carry to that, and I add a little bit of just to make sure to that. So essentially, it's almost the same as the long range technique. However, I am. Uh, I am a little bit closer to him, so I can add that. So we just go like that. We're doing it in a circle now, so that we can try to stay on the camera's viewpoint there, see? But, it, but if I'm at the range where I have to use the dagger to defend it, I'm really too close, okay? So I really probably then should be using have kind of a deflection, kind of an entry, instead of the scissor itself. So that's a base scissor, right? And it doesn't matter what order, if I do a number one, and he answers, then I hit an uppercut, and he answers, then I do an uppercut, and he answers, and I hit the downward stroke, and he answers, if I throw a straight, if I overhead backhand, whatever number or system you use is fine. We just use a certain pattern every time as opposed to changing the numbering system over and over again. That, that, that way you retain the information. So this is all about you retaining the information, not about how many different numbering systems that Doc know or I know so that we can flood you and, and have you not end up with anything when you're finished. So that's the basics of the scissor. Okay, so what we're going to do right now, we're going to go into what we call the count series. Now, we're just going to, for this moment in time, show you just a very basic count that you're actually going to use throughout the rest of this uh, video series. And then you can add counts onto this, prefixes, suffixes. 
but it's not about uh, piling on. We want something functional. So this is really simple. We just strike a one and a two and then a thrust, back and thrust. And then we go one, two, thrust, back and thrust. So then it's just like that. So that could be like that. Just like that. That's a four count. Four count is the base. One thrust, four, and back. Okay? One thrust, back, and thrust. 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 Really simple, okay, but there are many counts. We're going to do a five count, a seven count, a nine count, an eleven count, and so forth, okay? So that's the one I want you to retain. It's just a one, two, three, four, okay? And even if you just do it stationary, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's really old school how we used to do it. And then we would do that, we would take a step. Because in reality, I need to take a step when that thrust is coming at me. And that's going to give me my footwork for what we're going to do every, every level beyond this. Okay, so that's the basic four count. And we're going to use it. So make sure, establish that. Because you can't really move on from here unless we establish that, oh, we're just doing dry fire techniques or dry fire technical elements. I don't want to really spend that whole time doing that. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go and we're going to use the scissor and we're going to add on that four count that we did. The scissor will change a little bit, but it's primarily the same thing. So if I strike dog in number one and he scissors that, if I strike in number two, he scissors it, and then I thrust, he does the four count. Okay? Then I swing the number three, and then the number four, and then I thrust, and he'll four count that. Okay? And number five, and a number six, and he'll four count that. Just circling seven, eight, and he'll four count that. Okay? Uppercut, uppercut, and he'll four count that. Okay? Downward strike, really doesn't need to do that, and then he'll four count that. Okay? Now, in reality, this could be, if he fed me one, he might come with a four, I don't know. But when that thing comes, that's when I need that footwork. He might feed me with a five, and then a two, and it doesn't matter, I need that footwork. So that I'm at that position. That's gonna get you in the right position to execute all your technical elements. So all your disarms, uh, tie-ups, all the stuff that, that you probably may already know, but that is really um, not usable because of the context it's taught in most of the time is out of dry fire with good reason because it's quite difficult. However, I need to know when I scissor that and I scissor that, when he's in that position now, he's in a good position to execute. Whether that's just a snap and knock the, my hand off, or a snap and knock my hand off, or he's going to enter into a disarming technical element, or what I call sometimes a mechanical disarm versus a disarm by fire. Okay, so that's what we're going to take this into. First, we're going to go into a sombrata, and then we're going to go do some technical elements, and then we'll go and, and show you why. Okay, so what we're going to go into now is the sombrata, right, which is a flow exercise. And there are many versions of it, 
and I'm not <clears throat> here to chop down any trees or make any enemies, but you know, most people will do this umbrella like this. Here, to here, to here, to here, to here, with whatever configuration they use numbering system wise, right? See that? So whatever they're doing is kind of right here. And really that's okay. I mean that's that's really to me that's a medio porto Jordan Ubud range. However, you know, I mean if you want to price it like that, it's okay. For myself, what I want to do is maybe that first stroke is a long range strike, and then we go into maybe the medio largo, and then we'll get into the medio by the thrust, by right? what we call the segundo, right? So our sombrata, pretty much once you learn it, always contains, so what you learn on, on, on the single stick side, will be a base of fire sombrata and then you start adding punches. Right now you should already be able to add punches so now you're just adding a thrust. Now the thrust can come at any time but we put it at the end of the cycle so that we can practice but it doesn't have to be. So if I give a one and he gives a four and I give the overhead, I will give the thrust with a step. That way he has some move. Then he attacks me with the one, and I move off line, and then him, and then as I roof block that, he will spot that opening, and he'll try to hit me, and I just move, and that's my four count, okay? And so we just repeat that, because this is just a scissor you did, with the exception of it's a, it's a counter attack, and then a repose. Okay, so right now, once I land up here, anything he does with that weapon is going to get into the technical elements, right? And, and what I need to understand is, if I'm prepared to go into a technical element or a technique, it needs to be functional, it needs to work quickly, it can't have too many moving parts. Sometimes you just cannot help, but have to pally it or... or swing the weapon side to side, but typically we want it direct and we want it to be as fast as possible, okay? So what we're going to go into next will be what we call the uh, technical elements. Okay, so we're going to go into the technical elements uh, or the disarming phase, and, and I call this Primera y Segundo. And this goes all the way back to the 90s when when I, I edited our Bastone and Espadiadaga training down to some manageable size material. Now, this is still a lot of stuff. Now, what we're going to do anytime we enter a disarm, we don't want to do it when he attacks and then we go like that. Because that dagger is right there, and that can also be a fake, right? Which uh, we don't practice often. So when, when he's already attacked me and I did the roof like that, when he throws it and I hit this, now when he attacks, this is when I can start entering all my technical uh, things. What we're going to do as Primera is cool me out of that and hit the hand. So I hit the hand already, but I don't know if the weapon's out. If I knock the weapon out, I don't need to worry about it. I just take that out, but if the weapon does come, see I can go right back to my one, two, three, four. Right, right back to my basic four count. Right, right back to the four count will get me to the disarming phase. So once again, all I have to do is enter that, lift it up, give him the strike, move out of range of the dagger and hit it. Because if he's thrusting already, I'm going to hit it and move. And then I'll pick up the stick on the next time by. Then I'll probably be in a different technical element because the distance will have changed. But right now we're going to keep the distance the same. Just go like that. Hit the head, hit the body, put your arm over, and hit the dagger hand. Just tap this dagger and follow the pathway to the hand. Some people like to go one, two, this arm. Myself, I like to hit the hand no matter where he puts it, 
and then slide right to the disarm. That way, if he thrusts us, see, I can hit that, and I can go into that disarming element right at that moment. And then there, there again goes my, my basic five or six or seven or nine count. So that's the technique for the forehand side. Bang, 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 take it out, strike the hand. That time I moved outside of it because I didn't like my position on the inside. And once again, I flow out to range, and I probably might just stay at long range if he's lost his weapons, but he's probably dead already. Okay, so that's the same thing if I give number one and he just rejects that, crosses under, even if I stop it, he's going to hit my hand and go right to the disarm. When I thrust, he just decides inside or outside. And that's going to disarm it out. Then he's going to follow up on what's left of my body, okay? So that's what we call the Primera stick pointed up for angle one. It's called switch hit or cumbiana. The next one, what I do is on the number three line, I just take it like that. See why I wedge that in between two weapons? And then here I flip that over, which gives me that line again. That's essentially now the same technique. Okay, that's the same technique right there, if I do it like that. So this will make it easier for you to retain this knowledge if I hit it. Okay, let's do that from the other side. We'll do number one and number three again. But again, once you understand, you don't need a number, you don't need one, two, three. But right now, he's going to give me angle one. When I lift that, see where I hit the hand, I hit the hand, I throw it, so I hit the, that just comes out. Now this is on the outside of the weapon, I'm just hitting his hand, and I'm just going to do the four count. You see, now you see why that thrust in the four count is overhand like that because it's going right into the body, or it's going right for the, for the pickup of the weapon. Okay, so that is Primera of the angle one variety. See that? Hit, hit the hand, that goes right over. I, I'm going to pick that up, and then I'm going to follow up, probably long range. Okay. On the number three side of that same strike, so hit me again. What I'm going to do is wedge that in between my dagger and my stick. I don't want to, but remember I'm coming off of this. Maybe I'm starting to do that and that comes. So I really have to do that. It's the same as doing this, but I want that underneath so I can lift and move out of the dagger's way. Hit the dagger, this on the dagger, Okay, when the dagger comes, hit, thrust, hit, disarm, and follow up. Okay, follow up, kind of uh, whatever follow up you like to use. Okay, the number five will come, and I can tip the, the weapon to the outside, giving me that same line. Okay, and when that comes, See, I just use the same technique pretty much every time, okay? It's only going to be a variable if the second thrust comes high. Now I have to probably soot it and walk it back to the other side, okay? That's the difference between sometimes the high one, it's really difficult, even if I disarm this weapon already, to get this hit in and try to disarm that. So what I do is I just hit it and then and then walk it down. Now I walk this back and thrust him again before I go to the disarm. Don't be such a hurry to get to the disarm hand. You gotta keep hitting the person until they're ready to let go of the weapon. That's what we call tranquilization, okay? So that's for the forehand side, number one, Enter, hit the hand, disarm, four count. Okay. 
Number three, anchor, hit the hand, four count. Okay? Okay? Number five, if I hit the weapon out, can you hit the dagger hand? Come right back to the four count. Okay, that's one simple way. Now you have a technique for angles one, three, and five that match. On the backhand side of this, see what I do? I just do the same thing. Okay? So that's the angle, what we call number two. I just look like that down, hit the hand, disarm it out, and go like that. Okay? And we'll discuss this a little further later. If he hits the number four, it's the same thing. See the hand like that? Okay, and that will disarm it out. If you can do that for angle one, two, three, four, five, a million times, you're going to have that so easy to do, so fluid, you'll be able to execute it under duress. Okay, so if you see what I have been doing, is funneling the technique all to one position. But remember, we didn't get that from here. That's just so we could do it often. We got to it from the outside of this hand. Right from the outside of that hand, and maybe I'm already starting to diss on this when that hit comes. That's why I have to. See where I pick up the dagger hit right there? Okay, and that's automatically what? Now I'm open position, so all I have to do is rotate right on his arm bone, right? So when I went like that, you get up. When I went like that, see, I don't even have to look when he swings that next attack. That's going to automatically hit the head and the hand. Then I just go here. See, that's already in the armpit. This one is smashing down, right? on the hand and then going into the body or I just pick up the arm and that allows me the eye or the airway or the other way and then hit the body. Now I could go into joint locking. I don't want to do that. I want to get the guy out of my space. I want to finish him off in this video. Okay. So if he hits number four, it's the same technique. This is why I simplified it, specifically for the reason I want you to learn and be good at it. I can add 30 techniques to this easy. Okay. So if I hit him the backhand side, when he has deflected that, see how his weapon is open? If he hits my hand now, he's in perfect line to disarm that. If I thrust, he's in perfect line to four count that. Okay? But it may not always work out just like that. But what we want to do is be able to get you to do it from angle one. See that? See, you can see that simplicity in the movements. Okay? So you can do that from, from angle five. If he just points the stick up and turns it, he gets right to that same position. And right to that same position. Okay? So you're just entering and executing disarms and strikes uh, really simultaneously. So that now what you have is angles one to five for a stick pointed up position, basically one technique. Okay? Even though there can be variables, let's stick to that one technique until you have gotten good at it. And then we'll go back and we'll discuss variables, okay? So that's what we call Primera, and that is stick pointed up. Primera y Segundo. Okay, so we're going into technical elements, primary segundo, from the stick pointed down position. Now you see what we did in the stick pointed up is we eliminated the need to understand forehand or backhand strike. It's all about stick position. 
So this is going to flow like this. I really, as soon as I take the, the strike, I want to move away from the dagger. And then and this arm is right through that quadrant. See that? Now I can keep the stick or let it go. Right here, see, I can turn my body and go four count for the disarm. Now later we'll do different disarms, okay? But right now the four count is the disarm. So if I catch the number one like that, hit the hand, hit the knee, hit the head, execute the disarm. I have my dagger here. When the thrust comes, I just turn my body, smash the hand, thrust over the arm, capture the arm. That can already be two or three strikes. And then I move in the circle. Okay, that, that is your basic count exercise. So if he hits me the number three line, I essentially execute the same technique. See that? Sometimes I hit the dagger, sometimes I do not. That's why I always set up to deal with that dagger. Okay? So the number three line, he's going to low wing deflect. He's going to take a piece of the arm. He's going to lift up, and he's going to hit through. When he hits the dagger, he comes all the way back, hitting the head, and then strips it out. You can see where the thrust is. But because he's already prepared the pendulum out of that position, it, it doesn't come that fast. It's not the same as trying to catch up to it. You're actually already ahead of it. So when you do it like that, you're going to find it works a heck of a lot better, okay? So once again, as he goes all the way through that motion, he's taking that dagger or I'm blocking it. At that moment, if I'm thrusting, he's just turning out of that position. He's going to do this. In a rotating column, he's going to turn his core. So if one is like that, he's going to end up in a familiar position, which is the four count. Okay. So we're just four counting our way out of that. So if I hit the three line, and that cuts, and that just hits up, and then he follows that line, and he disarms that out. He's just going to follow up on that. Okay? Okay, if I hit the two line, he will just root block. And you can see that's the same set of circumstances that he finds himself in. So we're just funneling these techniques into one angle, right? So angle number two, again, is a roof block, or it could be a media fry light block, okay? It's not really a block, it's just creating the angle, okay? So if he has that number two line, see, I could do what we call media fry light. Sorry, no. You see, it's just hit that up. As I hit that up, see that allows me to hit, hit those lines really quickly. And once again, I turn and move, and then I take it out like that. Okay? So that, that's the same technique. If I do the number four, if I go like that, you see, this quadrant is taken. So inside, the outside line is taken. This gives me a piece of his hand and a piece of his arm his hand, his knee, the back of the head, the side of the head, the strike on the weapon, the thrust, the disarm, and then my follow count, whatever count I want to use on the follow-up is available for there. So what you can see is now you have basically a technique for the stick point up and a technique for the stick point down, all funneled into one very similar set of technical disarms, okay, or mechanical disarms. And once you get that down, we can proceed to teach more. So if I hit the backhand side, it's really already off of this thrust, and that's probably turning. So he just takes that out, and then I thrust, and he just takes it out, and he's gonna follow up, kind of whatever follow up, that is coming his way like that, see? So
So we, we really cannot say, hey, it's going to happen this way every time. But what you can say is, every time I find my stick in this position, I will follow this route. Every time I find my stick in that position, I will follow that route as a base. Once you establish the base, you will find endless possibilities exist. Okay, so anytime I hit this, and I want to do kumbiana, that thing could thrust before I'm done disarming the stick. That thing can hit with a turn. See, now I'm into that, that disarm, and that could be now the punch that I'm defending. So it isn't always going to be just like that. In some cases, when I do the kumbiana entry, and I hit that hand already, when I disarm this, that's already coming. So sometimes I need to scoop that. And you see where the hit goes to the hand, and the hit goes to the head, and the thrust goes to the body, and the disarm is, is like that. So those are the variables that start to make the whole program really, really hard to get a grip on because there are so many possibilities of entries into that second level and entries into the third level, you will become overwhelmed pretty easily with that. And then you end up, you walk away, you have nothing. Here what we're giving you is two major things that you do. And once you get good at those, we can add on different technical elements that will satisfy your curiosity, but it's not going to get you killed. So that's the main thing of this way of doing this material. Okay, so now what we go into here is, is what we call tie-ups. Now these are just a matter of, uh, of what is happening, happening situationally. In other words, that, that I have captured his weapon for disarming purposes and he has it either tied to his wrist or he has an extremely strong grip and won't grip out of it. So we learn through process to execute what we call a tie-up. Now there are many types of these tie-ups and we'll just go through them kind of one by one with the simplest one first. Okay, so I've already, like I said, we have gone through a Sombrata shed, okay, and we had that happen and I started to disarm that. And then that thing came, that's how I got here. Because I didn't step here to do this. Because he just half motions that and I'm dead. So you can't, but we're gonna show it like that. But I want you to understand, it is not like that. It will never work. And that's why many people claim, well that stuff is just, it's never gonna work. It will work, provided you enter it through the correct path. So I say my Ferrari is the fastest car, not underwater, it's not. So when I go like this and I cut the, the bicep, and I lift this up and I hit the elbow, when I come down and I smash the arm, I scoop this out, hitting it again and thrusting here, and then I enter into what we call the matador, or just like stabbing right, and a lot of times I'll step on his foot so he can't get out of that. So that's really not meant to disarm him. It's meant for when he won't relinquish the weapon. And I get like that, so I just hit that. See, and that comes in right there. Okay, kind of get both, both sides of the plumbing there, okay? So that, that is number one. Okay, so if a dog does it here, and he does the same thing, he ends with that. Okay, when I scoop that, he hits the head, and he brings that right into into me with both weapons, okay? So that's the tie-up number one. The second one enters the same way, but as I hit that, and I hit this, you see the secondary hit is here, and the weapon slashes the face, and this hits the top of the head and comes down, and that forms what we call the spear. So I really just tighten that up and I thrust it right into his airway, Okay, and that's what we call the spear, okay? So that would be tie up uh, number 1A. So that is, he just cuts that like that. He hits that, 
and he brings this completely in a circle, and then he hits the head, and he has that, see, and I'm kind of locked up here, so I really can't get out. If he drops his weight, it's going to pull me right into that thrust. Or if he just points it down, usually that's going to, this way they call it a spear. So if I enter that, see, I make that entry, I hit that hand running, come out, hit the head, and then I end up like that. And if I point it down, see, that just enters in. And you can cut him if he doesn't let go of the stick. So that's the tie-up number one and one A. Sometimes we call it number one and two, but that's starting from the inside position. Okay, the third one from the inside position is when I cut that and I move to this line, I strike him here and I take the elbow up and I insert this through, and now I have a throw position which is really hard on your training partner's shoulder. And you can slam him into the ground, but really what I want to do is take a step and throw him into a concrete wall or a car door or right, whatever, whatever you have, throw him off a cliff in the jungle, right? Okay, so as he enters that and he stakes that up, and he hits that, he just thrusts that into my arm, lifting it up, punio goes over my elbow, and now he has a good throw, or he has a takedown if he wants to drop down. Okay, so he can easily tear my shoulder out if he just went like that. Okay, so so that's the third tie up from the inside position. There are more. Okay, but we we'll just leave it at those three so you get it. So number one is the matador. See that? So he just brings that down. The thrust is direct from that side. Okay. So number one is the matador. Okay, I move it like that and I just thrust it right from that side. Okay, number two is the spear. Smack it and bring it down and thrust in there. Okay, so number two is the spear. Cut, lift, strike the hand, scoop the arm, strike the hand again, Bring the hand palm up this time, which will control it. Hit the face, thrust the airway, or thrust the chest, or you can actually just throw him from here if you want to throw him. But probably you're throwing a dead body if you look at all the, the strikes he's taken. So the third one is when he, he picks up the arm, so he hits that, cover and hit, and then he just picks this up. And then he just brings that over, and that will disarm the stick. And now he doesn't have to worry about disarming the dagger, he's just going to throw my body off camera, right? So as I do this here, I hit that. See, that's cover and hit. Lift up the arm, switch positions, and then you have that technique like that. So that would be uh, the third inside tie up or tie up 3A. Okay, so that's that's the basics of, of those inside tie-ups. Again, there are more than that, but I don't want to flood so that you can't do them. So try those from the inside, and then uh, get to those, and then we'll give you a way to get to them from another pathway. Okay, so once again, what we're going to do is go into the tie-ups, and this time is what we call tie-up B, or from the outside. So once that, that stick makes contact, I slid it to the outside. I bring the arm down like that. When he hits with the stick, see, that's really going to smash his face. And then I'm going to tie that up like that. So if we walk around, so when I tie that up, I go over his dagger and under my arm puño. Then I do like a bad bong sound. Then I can thrust this in, and then eject the weapon following the hand down, and then I have both weapons, which could be a break, and then into my striking follow-up. So that's what we call number two outside. So as he hits that, and he brings it back, he brings it a little bit low so I can't thrust underneath. And then he brings this over top, 
and he ties that up over time. Makes a bog sound, ties me up, thrust through there, and you see how you end up hooking me. And that has really excellent positioning. And again, we're probably getting to this by mistake because he won't let go of the stick. Okay? The second version of that is when I go here, immediately I tuck this under my armpit so that when he throws the see that motion will serve to disarm it with the stick and put his dagger in jeopardy. Then I can follow up with a four count. So if he goes here, and then he tucks that under the arm, and then that puts the dagger in, uh, in jeopardy at that moment. Okay, so the third one, as I do this here, I just happen to bring this down, and what I do is I bring this and I put this under, and this one over. And that's really, sometimes people do that by reflex. I, I hate it myself, okay, but, People do that by reflex, and then the outcome here would be the same, okay? So if I went like that, and see how I scrambled that, and I just kind of go like this, do it all at once. See that? So instead of going here, 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 it just kind of goes here. And that's the same, same technique at that moment from then on, okay? So, so as you do the inside tie, with a long puño on this one, where he needs a long puño, and he goes, and that's perfect, ties it right up, and that's why I don't like it, because that will bounce out of there. Time and time again, that will bounce out. And, and, and some people like to have a puño that's two fists long. So they go like that, one, two, three, and that's where they hold the stick. That would be more for a puño that's, that's that long. So when you go like that, see, and I get here and I come here, see, it's really easy for me to just stick that like that. Because that punio is so long. But I don't like the punio that long because, yeah, it makes my stick fast, but it takes away all my reach. So I just want enough punio to strike and hook and pull with. I don't really need a, a two and a half hand or a one and a half hand. I really like it uh, just about inch and a half uh, sticking out the most. And you'll find that comes out in the So these are your tie-ups from what we call medio corto, okay? So that's the three basic times for outside the stick, three for inside the stick. Okay, what I'm gonna do here now is just show you, and this is one little bonus thing that I really, really like about this platform that I'm showing you here is that when I do, for instance, I'm going to do stick pointed down, I deflect that, and I'm going to disarm that, and I go like that, and he doesn't let go of the stick. You see where that puts me? Right in the position for that tie-up. Okay? When, when he do some broad. So we go some broad up here, and when I hit that hand, and he comes with that stick, and I hit that, at that moment, he doesn't let go. See, I could already have tucked that under and have already gotten to my tie-up. And I got to the tie-up because he just didn't let go of the stick. Okay, that's uh, uh, why I really like that platform of Primary Segundo. So the same thing here, if I went like that, and I go like this, and he pulls the stick away, and I hit that dagger. See, a lot of times now, I'm going to end up in that snaking position. That's where I didn't want to be, but that's where I am. So if you didn't want to be there, fine, but you might get there, so be prepared to do that. So you see that, 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 that basic set of techniques that we gave you can flow right out into a, what people would call a complex technique. Now, I didn't have the intention to do that. I did not have the intention. However, situationally, I was placed in that position to do that. And if you can see this technique here, see this flows so easily into that technique. You see that? It flows so easily into that. It's just really, really smooth. People say, how do you get to that? Well, that's how you got to that. 
because I already hit this hand. See, and I'm already trying to do that, and I've got it, I went here. I didn't just go like this and try to go here, because I'm probably going to get killed. Even if I went like that and addressed it, and I went here, and then I tried to complete that, too many moving parts there for me to probably pull that off. However, incidentally, I got here from here, right, and then I went like that, and I hit that, and that wouldn't come out. That's how I got there. That's probably very, very likely that that's going to happen. <clears throat> you don't even have to have to. Once you try it, you won't argue it. At first, you might say, "Well, this and this and this can happen." Of course, and and we have an answer for that too. But if I try to put it, because any time I'm here and that dagger comes, there could be the stick first and then the dagger. There could be the dagger first, then the stick. There could be the stick, and then the dagger gets scooped. There could be a high thrust, right, with a scoop, okay, which has to be brought back. Okay, so once we start getting into all that material, adding on each one of those possibilities to each one of the entries with a pathway will be mind-numbing, and you wouldn't be to understand it. But if I give you these pathways and this understanding of how to enter and get to the position, it really is nothing for you if you already did double dagger to scoop that dagger and end up in that position. And then find out through that, see, hey, this is the position I was familiar with. That's a position I was familiar with. Whatever that position, uh, whichever one of those techniques happens to play itself out, at that time. It's just a matter of where is your stick, where is your dagger, where are you, and how that will work. So if you take that primary segundo and, and, and put that into your muscle memory so that it's automatic, you can add the tie-ups onto that really, really easy. Won't be a problem.